Welcome, everybody. This is the Power Podcasting Online Radio and TV Network. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Podology. Really excited to have you join us today for this Hangout or for this podcast. It's delivered in both formats. I have a very, very special guest. He graduated from Cambridge University and he attended the British Officers Military Academy, RMA Sandhurst, and was commissioned by the Royal Tank Regiment. After five years of service, this captain retired and joined corporate finance in the city of London. Worked for a number of corporations there before he co-founded his first boutique finance firm, Paul Mall Capital. He's currently a partner in his second firm, IAF Capital, of which he's also a founder member. He specializes in the technology sector and his finance knowledge has been combined with his strategic and marketing expertise. Strategic marketing is the core theme of his blog, where he is the six-minute strategist. He is the founder and host of the Online Learning Podcast, which can be found at www.onlinelearningpodcast.com. He's also a very, very good uh, and successful Udemy instructor. So I brought him on because I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, this amazing background and how he went from being a captain in the Army uh, in the military to uh, to high finance in the city of London to uh, working at uh, teaching people all of the different things that he knows at Udemy. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I have 16 courses in Udemy right now, over 300 awesome reviews of his courses and over 21,000 students. So welcome John Colley to the, sh to the show. I'm really happy to have you here with us. That's really kind, and thank you for such a, a wonderful um, lead-in. I really appreciate it. Okay, so you're in the military. It looks like you're in a tank. How did you get into finance, and particularly in the city of London? I think the, the simple answer to that was the hard way, because I, I, I had been army barmy since about the age of six, um, but then decided that uh, once I was in the army, actually, although the physical stuff was quite stimulating, it wasn't very mentally stimulating, certainly as a, a junior tank regiment officer. Um, and I was stuck in Germany in the middle of the 80s when there was really nothing going on. And so I sort of thought I've got to do okay, something well, which is more stimulating. Second. There was really nothing yeah. going on. Now, personally, not, you know, being in the military, I think that's a good thing, <laughs> but I guess I it can be kind of boring, agree. right? Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I mean, the fact that, you know, there were no wars going on was, was fantastically good news. I mean, I'm, we should have one, but it just meant that life was a bit dull and I wanted um, particularly more intellectual stimulation. So I basically just applied as a graduate trainee, went back to the bottom and applied to her load of firms and was very lucky to get onto a graduate program and, and age 26 or 27. Um, and then uh, got off that, taken off that pretty quickly because uh, somebody offered me a full-time post in, in the corporate finance department. And then I went and did a few exams and I did a, a night time, I did a two-year evening MBA to, uh, to try and get myself up the, the academic path a bit more relevantly into the city. So um, yeah, a bit of hard work and a bit of luck, I guess. Okay, so now how did you, are, now I'm assuming you're still doing the finance stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I just I just pick and choose my projects. Um, I mean, I've just, I, I enjoy doing the, the learning and the podcasting and the online stuff so much more. Um, so I, I've got a couple of projects on at the moment, but otherwise I can choose very carefully which, which clients I'll take on. Okay, cool. So now tell us how you then transitioned from high finance in London, England, to becoming one of the top Udemy instructors? Well, it all came about because my uh, I sat down with my partners one day and I asked them a very simple question, which is, why do we have a website? And I was told, because we have to have a website. And I said, okay, fine. So who comes to the website? Don't know. Where do they come from? No idea. What are they looking for when they come to the website? Don't know. Don't, 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 got absolutely no idea at all. Okay, so do they find what they're looking for? Don't know. Do we have any contact with them? Do we get any information from them? And I asked them all these questions, and the answer to every single question was, um, don't know or no or no. So I said, well, why exactly do we have a website? And it was basically just brochureware. And um, because we were a small partnership, I felt I had to learn more about marketing my own business 
in order to, to, to find new clients. So I started learning all this online stuff and I started a blog and started my first podcast. I'm now on my second, as we'll talk about. Um, and then it, I rationalized because I've had 20, 30 years experience of finance and all these other things. I thought, well, surely I can get this knowledge out online and, and that'll be another way of, of getting away from the dollars for hours that my corporate finance project work involves. And then I started trying to make a course and kind of eventually found out how to make a course. And I discovered Udemy and the ball started rolling. And it's basically a little, a little snowball started at the top of the hill and it's still going down and it's still getting bigger. <laughs> Wonderful. So well, let's talk about a couple of the courses. What I'd like to do is talk about a, a couple of the courses and then um, uh, sort of maybe perhaps your plans for the, for the future and the expansion. You've got 16 courses now. Uh, a couple of them involve how to uh, create a Udemy course, one of which is uh, Master Udemy, Plan, Publish, and Promote. Uh, I think there's more to the title than that, but unfortunately it doesn't fit in my screen. Profitable courses. And profitable <laughs> courses. And publish, publish courses, yeah. Lots of Ps. Right. So, uh, do you, so, okay, I have a couple questions, right? Because one of the ways that I've gone at Udemy is I have my core expertise, which is podcasting and some internet marketing. But my client, well, so what happened with me was I joined Udemy probably two years ago and I ignored it for a year and a bit. And then one of my friends uh, who actually I did some consulting work for, he had an app company and I talked to his marketing department and at the end of it, he said, you need to put together a video course about all this stuff that you've talked about. And he just got me all fired up. So I took off and went to South America for six weeks. And during that time, I planned my course not really thinking about Udemy, uh, well, a little bit, because I sort of looked at like, where could I put it was my first question, and Udemy struck, you know, struck a chord. And then I planned it, and then I recorded the introductions to each section in Machu Picchu, because I was nowhere where, first of all, I didn't have equipment with me that I could record good audio, uh, except, uh, yeah, at all. But I was at Machu Picchu, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to have Machu Picchu in the background as I'm talking about the different sections, which I could do without notes because I talk about it all the time. And then uh, I talked to some of my clients who are not in podcasting. They're in alternative health or finance or uh, therapy or all these different areas, and they all said, yeah, let's do that. And I found myself creating an assortment of courses that are totally unrelated to each other. And so now I'm, I'm at the point where I'm saying, okay, well, what we need to do is do courses that build on the core courses here so that we have more than just the one course, because I don't think that works. Uh, so I'm, so I find myself doing, you know, four or five alternative health courses and four or five finance courses and three or four podcast courses. And I'm kind of all over the place and that's, ten, that's become my strategy. And I, I can't change it because I'm too, I'm too far into it. But I like to know, you know, for someone that's just starting out in Udemy, because I had nobody that told me whether that was good or bad. I had nobody that I asked. I never thought of it. Um, but in, like in your opinion, so now I'm asking you. And in your opinion, if somebody is going to be starting out on Udemy, uh, you know, what would be kind of the 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 overall big picture that you would suggest to them? Yeah. Okay. I think I think you've hit upon a really really important point, point. Um, and the the starting point is that whatever you create your courses about shouldn't be based on your expertise in the sense that um, I started making my courses about things I knew about, and then put them out there without actually asking the question whether anybody actually wanted to learn about them, because I thought they were really interesting because it's stuff I knew about, but I didn't actually address the question what did my students want. So that would be my starting point. And you really have to find a pain, a problem, a need, um, or indeed a, a skill or something that they, they need or they, they want or they're suffering from and address that. And then I think about creating clusters of courses. The name of the game on Udemy is to have um, a portfolio of courses. If you just have one course, you're never really gonna make it. Fundamental reason for that is the best way to um, to sell your courses yourself is to cross-sell between your courses to your existing students. 
Um, and you know, the answer is just pile in more students and then cross sell to them once they've got to know that I can trust you. So find a core area, which is a pain or a problem you can solve and then build, it's like sort of hub or spoke, if you like, or satellites floating around the world. Then you build the, the add-on courses that, that bring either a different niche into it or a different aspect, a different slant. And then you can, you can cross sell to those clusters. And yeah, I mean, this is something which I've learned from experience. I didn't actually uh, work it out before. I have a checklist, which I'm very happy to give you and you can give it as a download to your, um, your audience, if you like. Sure. Um, and I can just, it's just a two, two page PDF. Um, it's actually one of my fiver gigs and we can talk about that a bit later. It takes you through the, the steps of topic selection. Um, and I've been honing this for months, so it's, it's it's pretty tight. It's only two pages, but it's just like a process you follow. And if you follow that, then at the end of that, you'll end up not making all the mistakes that um, I've made. And from the sound of it, you've made some similar uh, errors because we haven't had that initial guidance to start with. Right, right. Uh, yeah, and I, I have, I think, 10 or 12 courses, and I'm happy to say that, that uh, my podcast course, my first one is uh, often the number one course in my in my group of courses, which uh, either can be like really a good or really bad thing, I guess, depending on how you look at it. Um, Udemy also has a, um, a page on its site somewhere which are hot courses. So they, they have identified areas where they feel that there's lots of demand, but there's not lots of uh, enough courses. Uh, do you ever look at that? To be absolutely honest, I haven't. Um, um, I just actually, to be really honest, I wasn't aware that that page existed, so I'd love to have the link for it. But um, my my approach at the moment has been, I, I actually, well, there you see my 16 courses. I've got about another eight in draft form. And when I get an idea about a course, I'll often create a course on Udemy and just use Udemy as a drafting tool so I can brainstorm my ideas there. And sometimes they just get deleted, but other times they sit there for a while until I come around to them. Um, but I have sort of short and medium term objectives, which I'm trying to fulfill all the time. And sometimes those courses get into those and they get completed. And other times they still be on the stocks. So um, it's, you know, the, if if one had an unlimited amount of time, I'm you know I'm sure we could all produce 40, 50, or 60 courses. But courses can take you know if you can get more than one a month done, I think you're doing pretty well. If you're doing other things at the same time as we all are. Right, right, yeah. Like it's it's very hard for uh, I know some people that Udemy is a full time job, and uh, my to be quite honest, my my goal is to have as few full time jobs as I can ha possibly have. Uh, so let's get let's get back into the master uh, master Udemy. What are some of the things that you think people really need to be aware of? And, and I think let's just talk about people that are just starting out, um, if they really want to be successful. So one of them is of course course selection, and I think that's really yeah, an interesting point that you make about people. I really know I'm really good at you know uh, fixing antique cars, but if you make a course of that and put it on Udemy, the chances are you know, your mom will buy it and not much, nobody else will. Um, Actually, I love cars. I'd probably buy it. <laughs> right. um, I, th I think, I think to, to answer your question, um, I mean, I've of course around six steps and as the six minute strategist, you won't be surprised to hear that. Um, and essentially you do have to have a, a systematic approach to doing these courses because they, they must um, hang together, they must flow. So the first course, we've, the first step we've already talked about, which is uh, planning. Then it's production and working out the simplest, easiest, quickest way for you, you yourself to produce a high quality lecture so that you can put your course together efficiently. So you have to work out your own way, your own style of lecture, and your own, but, but you know you need to master the software, you need to master the hardware, you need to have an easy setup so that you can get on with it very straightforwardly. So mastering the production process um, is a, an initial step, but once you've done it, it's a bit like riding the bike. You know you can come back to it, and it's easy after that. Then you've got the um, the and there's quite a lot to publishing. Of course, it's not just hitting that button you know if you're going to get your course to launch properly then you actually need to work through a pre-launch a launch and a post-launch phase um, all around the publication um, segment 
so that your course gets off to the best possible start. I then sneak in a little segment which I call proof because it's so important. And it's all about making sure that you get enough social proof around your courses and indeed around yourself in the in the wider ecosystem of the internet so that um, the courses themselves become interesting to newcomers and they will look at them and believe that, that they're good quality courses. Then there's a, a massive area which um, we're all struggling with and we all you know, nobody's ever yet mastered, which is all around promotion. Because although Udemy themselves are a fantastic marketplace, they're not just a platform. They have 7 million students, and they do a lot of promoting of courses to those students. You have to do your own promotions. You need to work out your own promotional strategies. And uh, the more I research this, and, and I'm building a, a, a very large course on how to create online courses, the more I research this, the more I realize that there are so many facets to this and so many different ways to doing it. And you have to work out you have to understand what's possible and then you have to work out what works for you and for your audience and for your time and what you're doing. And then the final phase um, is one that, that people often don't think about and that forms. And it's really, uh, I'm actually writing a Kindle book which is entitled um, To Udemy and Beyond. And the lesson of this is that Udemy is, it should only be your starting point. Because once you've mastered this art of making money with online courses, First of all, you can take those online courses and sell them in other places. You can self-host them or you can put them other, on other platforms like SkillFeed and Skillshare. Um, but then you can also take um, your expertise that you'll develop, develop marketing those courses and promoting them and start to derive and create other income streams, which either, either in some way connected or in some way maybe they'll be independent, uh, which will then tie in and give you a multiple uh, income stream at the heart of which will be your online courses business. So that's how I set it up for people to, right. to, to learn about online courses. So I guess I'm really fascinated with the last part that you said. I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory, but we, you know, it, I think it was three or four years ago, someone came out with a book about multiple streams of income and everybody kind of jumped on it and they had, Unfortunately, I think for most of the people that followed this individual, it was 50 cents here and 40 cents here and 20 cents here as opposed to uh, hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. But uh, you've, you've, I just actually took one of your courses and in it you're talking about how you create another, and I think it was absolutely brilliant the way you came up with this. Um, you've got the course, Udemy, if you let them, we'll sell your course for $10. I call it the Walmart of online video because all they're doing is they're just pushing out this stuff. And really, when you think about it, what's the cost? There's the cost of our time, and then there's electrons splitting across the internet. Uh, it's not like my background is groceries, and it's not like you had to get a pork and beans you know, from the manufacturer to the store and then from the store home. And there was all these stops along the way, which cost money. It's just, it's just at the speed of light and and uh, very very inexpensive. So I can see why they would they would go after that model and try to dominate. Uh, so when from from that perspective, it's like, well, if my course is going to be sold very very cheaply, then why not go someplace where people buy things very very cheaply, and Put my course up and you came up with a with a strategy along those lines well what i've done is i i, I put my uh, courses on skill feed i haven't actually got them on skillshare yet that's a, a, a glaring omission of mine um so that's using the same content twice i've then got my courses on the fedora platform although you can use use other platforms like lfe or thinkific and i can then drive my own those courses collect the names and addresses and sell them at whatever prices I want. But um, I'm also selling other people's courses with the affiliate scheme through Udemy. So I'm making a small income through that. I set up a, an account on Fiverr and I sell um, uh, some of my courses for $5, um, some of my lower, lesser courses for $5 and then sell my higher end courses uh, as gig extras for $20. Uh, through Fiverr, selling my advice. We've already talked about my my topic selection checklist. So I'm selling my advice through Fiverr as well. And Fiverr 
coming out of my expertise with you know audio and video because of my course creation and because of my podcasting i'm doing voiceover work and i'm making a couple hundred bucks a month now just on voiceover gigs so i'm multi-streaming my income by just you know growing it out and and i've got a healthy five figure us dollar is now and it's growing every month and you know part of it is is scalable uh, once you've got the courses out there and then you just set up your promotion systems and i admit that the voiceover stuff the freelancing stuff isn't scalable but hey it's good it's good money if as long as they're paying a decent rate for my hourly rate um i'll take that all day of the week Right. Um, and there's still lots of things I, I could I could be doing. I haven't. I'm starting. I've got two Kindle books on the stocks, and getting an income out of Kindle on Amazon, where there are 300 million people on Amazon with credit cards waving in the air, to then feed back the Amazon uh, audience into my courses. You know, with coupons and free offers and audio books and all sorts of stuff, just grows the ecosystem. It's just a question of hours in the day. Right. Yeah. So there's there's lots going on. Well, I took your Fiverr success course and uh, and I just thought the whole idea was brilliant because we already have the course and then you can probably get more. This is why it's important that the, all the courses are related. Obviously, if you did, uh, if you if you tried to sell uh, one of your Udemy courses and then you upsell them into one of your finance courses, that's not going to work very well, I wouldn't think. So well, I'm, I'm trying to build it around an, an ecosystem at the moment, which is around how I'm building my online income. The, the finance courses are a whole other area, which I'm going to come back to once I've got the platform of you know, my, my online business set up. And, and once I've done that, then you know, we move on to, to other things, you know, dog training, perhaps. You know, I've got a, 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 a hairy border collie sitting down, you know, scratching away down here. So you know, maybe you know, if he can, I can move him into the asset column from the liability column because he seems right. to be a permanent negative cash flow. <laughs> so you're, uh, you're also a podcaster. So tell us a little bit about some of your podcasting. Well, I, I started off with a, 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 with a podcast called The a Conversation with the Six Minute Strategist, which uh, was great fun, but very, very varied and just an excuse for me to do whatever I wanted. Um, when I really sort of got into Udemy there, and this was in about October 2013, I thought, hey, there's no, I looked and I couldn't find an online learning related podcast. So I thought, okay, I'll have this space. Thank you very much. So I started interviewing Udemy instructors. And we're now on, I'm just um, about to do episode 192 uh, book reviews and various other things. So I've actually produced over 150 different episodes, but I'm now back focused on a very simple um, interview somebody either around online courses, instructor, um, or something which is going to be related to the whole ecosystem of building a business around online courses. So I've interviewed Kindle experts. I just interviewed for the, the upcoming episode a very interesting guy who's doing very clever stuff, growing Facebook audiences. And it's a very good way to build another community into which you can then promote your online goods and services. So I've got an interview with Stephen Aitchison coming up on Friday in episode 119. So I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do one episode a week. Um, I took a little break for the summer this this week, but I, it's a great way of of um, building a reputation, of building a community, um, and meeting and creating a, a, a network of really fascinating and interesting people. What's the URL again of your podcast? Um, well, I, I normally send people through. I haven't actually got a separate website for it. You can, um, I think the 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 the, the link you gave out. Uh, it may be a URL which I still got, but the easiest way is if they go to jbdcolly.com forward slash olp itunes, and then that'll take you to the iTunes, um, you know, the uh, you know um, account for for the the online learning podcast. And that's the simplest way to get to it. But I've also actually got it on Udemy. Um, and this was a, um, a, a long running argument I had with Udemy because it's, you know, Udemy is about video courses and this is, um, that it is an audio podcast. And um, it took me about 50 episodes before they said, yes, okay, we'll, we'll actually allow it as a course in the marketplace. But my quid pro for quo for that was that I promised it would be, always be free and it is. So anybody can sign up to it and it's organized by the same categories that you find in Udemy. So it's not organized in episodes one to a hundred, but I have sections in there so that you can go and find the photography category, photographer, 
or you can find um, you know the business. And I'm going to be somebody who produces business courses. And I've got a section as well at the top for Udemy instructors, where I'm I'm interviewing teaching skills to Udemy instructors. So it's it's hopefully very easy to follow. Um, and I try and keep it up to date. I've just added five episodes to it, and it's now got about 115, I think, different episodes. I have occasionally interviewed people with Udemy, and in respect to Udemy, those episodes don't appear on the Udemy course because um, I'm not trying to uh, abuse Udemy's goodwill by allowing me to host the uh, the podcast. Uh, it's genuinely just a place where I want people to go and find it. And if you go to my 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 instructor profile which is udemy.com forward slash u forward slash john collie you'll find the online learning podcast and you can jump in there and then listen to and listen to to, to episodes to your heart's content so okay so you've uh, you've kind of broken i'm just looking at the page you've broken two rules one is it's all audio and not uh, not video which is interesting and the other one is of course that they're all longer than 20 minutes which is uh so I just and i think I think it's wonderful because what it shows is the flexibility on Unibee's uh, side, right? And also a, um, you know, a willingness to try some some different things. And on on your in and on your side, here's a way that you really can give back to to the community. Here's these interviews that you're doing. It's a, organized in a very nice way so that I don't have to go through them all and you know, listen to a bunch of stuff that's totally not relevant to what I want to do. I can kind of pick and choose. Mm. So I think yeah. that's and, and you know, and hope, I hope I hope it works. In fact, Udemy told me that new hires at Udemy are now required to subscribe and listen to this podcast. So uh, <laughs> that makes me feel pretty good. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well, I think we've kind of come to the end. Uh, don't think I have any more that I really want to ask you, and I really want to thank you very much, John, for your time and and uh, sharing everything with with my audience. I really appreciate that. Is there any kind of final uh, words of wisdoms or tips or uh, you know finance things that we should know about that's happening uh, that you'd like to tell anyone? Um, just you know, if if you've got a um, an expertise and you are good at something, you can share this with the world. And it is so easy. The setup costs are so small. Um, and whether you do it as a full-time job or whether you're just going to do it as a side hustle, um, you know, it is probably one of the fastest growing markets in the world. And just go and get stuck in and give it a try because it is the most fantastic fun. You meet all sorts of fascinating people. And, you know, as I say in the prelude to one of my little books, you know, it's um, you know from uh, it's pa from passion to profit with online courses. You know, discover your inner expert, teach the world, and get paid for it. Sounds good to me. So uh, John has been generous enough to uh, give us some coupons for uh, some of his courses. I'm going to be posting them uh, below in YouTube and uh, below anywhere else that I post them, or on my uh, PowerPodcasters.com site. Uh, just look for John Colley and you'll see the, sh the show notes there as well. And in, of course, in iTunes, if you're listening on iTunes, just look at the show notes. They'll be in there. And I think iTunes actually just made a change where URLs in the show notes are actually clickable. I don't know if they're tappable on your smartphone or not, but they're they're turning them into clickables. So that's going to make it a lot easier for for uh, for us to share more information, more resources. So thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, John, for being on the show. Really appreciate you. Thank you, and, uh, Thank you very much for, for inviting me on. I really, really had a lot of fun, and I really appreciate your, uh, your, your kind invitation. Awesome. So we'll see you next time, everybody. This is the Power Podcasters Online Radio and TV Network, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.